I'm a birder and my hobby is producing videos of birds, squirrels, and nature in general in the backyard. In fact, I've made a sort of bird and small mammal paradise and studio out of the backyard. The backyard abuts against a conservation area that is quite wild and provides a great habitat for bird and animal watching. Of course, feeding the birds and squirrels in particular makes them easy targets for the occasional feral or stray cat that discovers the area in search of a meal. This is the story of a fascinating feral cat that appeared in the backyard one day and began hunting and eating birds, mostly morning doves, and squirrels in the early morning and early evening hours. Here the cat has just finished eating a squirrel and ambushed on the fence between the backyard and the conservation area. The layout of the house and backyard is such that there's no way I could approach the cat without it seeing me. At the first sight of me in the large Florida room windows or upon cracking the door open it would run and jump over the back fence. I'm an animal lover but cannot abide feral, stray or other people's cats feeding on wildlife in my backyard. My attempts at chasing the cat off were of little effect as the draw of a good meal was simply too strong and I couldn't watch the backyard 24-7. The thought of trapping the cat and taking it to the county shelter entered my mind. I began observing and filming the cat behind windows without its knowledge. After all, I'm a wildlife videographer and this was a beautiful wild cat. I'm not a cat expert by any means, but it seemed rather attractive and exotic for a feral cat. Almost like a Bengal tabby cat mix. It may actually have been someone's pet as a kitten and been lost or dropped off at the dead end road on the other side of the conservation area. That dumping ground was the source of stray cats in the past. It's not the cat's fault that it's been put in a position where it has to hunt wildlife to live. I decided to get to know this cat, study it, try and befriend it, and see if it could be socialized. My new strategy was that when I observed the cat stalking squirrels, as in this clip, I would carefully open the door, slowly try to approach and talk soothingly, and interrupt the hunt and then leave dried food for the cat at the fence. After running and jumping over the fence, the cat would return in a few minutes after I went back inside and eat the food. I was frustrating its hunting efforts and beginning to supplement its diet. After several weeks, the cat would no longer run as soon as I opened the door. And this is the first time that the cat came back to eat the biscuits while I sat at the fire pit bench about 30 feet away. On some mornings I would have coffee at the fire pit and feed the squirrels and birds peanuts. I had just quietly interrupted the cat's squirrel hunt and put food out for the cat, and it has come down to eat while I continued to feed the squirrels. I wonder what was going through the cat's mind as the squirrels scampered back and forth in front of it. What was interesting is that the squirrels readily adapted to the cat's presence and went back and forth just a few bounds away from the cat while the cat ate, but kept its eye glued on the squirrels. The squirrels accepted the cat in my presence, but the cat, a stone-cold squirrel killer, 
was just biding its time waiting for an opportunity, watching the squirrels go back and forth from the fence to the bench. Here a squirrel has gone out in the open yard to bury a peanut and is not paying attention, and the cat immediately senses that it has the advantage and locks on to the squirrel, and it's going to go for it whether I'm there or not. Of course, being responsible for setting up this scenario, I could not let it unfold to where the cat gets the squirrel. Hey, 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 hey. Get 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 Where'd you go? I was fortunate to stop the kill without getting scratched or bitten, and the cat retreated to a safe place while the squirrels and birds sounded a general alarm that the cat was in the area. This had a serious negative impact on the trust of the squirrels in the presence of the cat. In the process of trying to socialize the cat and treating it in a non-threatening manner and leaving food for it on my side of the fence, over time it began to move its base of operations from the conservation area behind the house to the fire pit and hang out and relax under one of the benches. This was progress in socialization but put the birds and mammals at greater risk. The cat did not stop hunting, of course. Here one can appreciate just how hard it is to see the cat as it blends in with the brush. It has an amazing ability to blend in with its environment. As I focused on the cat as a wild animal, I gained more and more respect and admiration for its beauty and its ability to live free in the wild. I decided to up the ante and introduce the cat to some canned sardines. You can tell by its reaction it has never encountered anything quite like that before. The introduction of the sardines was a big advancement in our relationship from the dried biscuits. The cat would now allow me to get much closer as long as I didn't make any quick moves or make direct eye contact. I could film with the swivel screen on the camera such that direct eye contact was not necessary. The cat was happy with that, although at times it made for some shaky video. On the next day with the sardines, I was able to sit on a bench next to it about eight feet away, still not making eye contact or attempting to approach and touch, and the cat was becoming more relaxed in my presence and trusting that I'm not attempting to harm it and that the food was not a trap. In the entire time I knew the cat had never made any vocalization, no purr, no meow. What it would do when it would let me near was when I first approached it would hiss, always just one hiss, the only sound it made the entire time. I'm not sure if that hiss was a greeting or a warning. Here it is quite close to my leg as it's involved in eating and beginning to make a little bit of eye contact, but if I make just the slightest move, the cat will make a quick retreat. Here I just made a slight awkward move with the camera and that was all it took to put an end to this interaction.
Of course, when I sat on the bench at the fire pit, the squirrels expected that they could come to the pit for some free peanuts. But here the squirrel is thinking, what is my buddy doing feeding and hanging out with my enemy that eats my friends? And the squirrel did not approach. The cat continued to hunt the squirrels back on the fence. This is the classic hunting maneuver. The squirrels are creatures of habit and use the fence lines as their highways, and the cat has patience. In this case, I'm there and cramping its style, and the squirrels are setting off the alarms, so its hunting ability is seriously hampered. But while causing its failure in hunting, I'm supplanting its diet. A routine developed where if I was at the fire pit, there would be food, and the cat had its favorite spot under the bench about eight feet away. Still not a lot of eye contact, but the cat continues to become more comfortable in my presence. The routine continued on almost a daily basis for over four weeks, and our relationship continued to slowly evolve and improve. On this particular day, the cat started to loosen up a bit and act more comfortable. I never made any attempt to move toward the cat or make physical contact, and on this day we made considerable progress. Here it's clear the cat has suffered an injury to its right hip. A feral or stray cats typically don't live long in the wild. It's a dangerous environment, especially in a conservation area. Of course, nothing so far has changed the cat's habit of wanting to hunt and eat squirrels and birds. Here it has treed a squirrel on the Florida room screen. The fact that the squirrel was able to reach the screen saved its life. Don't eat the squirrels. Squirrels are your friend. I did not attempt to discipline it, just accept the cat for the wild animal it was. I tried to reassure it and continue progress towards socialization. By its expression, you can see it's none too happy to have lost that squirrel. The next day, the cat is in trouble with the blue jays, which are remarkable for their ability to sound the general alarm and scold the cat and frustrate its hunting efforts. You can see the classic expression on the cat's face. Another hunt foiled. Back in the woods hunting the next day. What was interesting about the relationship was that the cat never begged for food and I don't think it really cared if I gave it food or not after a time. At least it acted that way. It didn't seem to be its main motivation. The cat had a proud, regal air about it, no doubt due to its competence living in the wild as a hunter and a forager. 
But I also think he began to enjoy just hanging out. The next day, however, I'm in hot water with the cat for some reason. It's ticked off and the relationship has had a setback. It's not even bothering to walk over and get the food left in its favorite spot. Just the slightest shift in my body with the camera and the cat retreated well away. A definite signal it was not in a good mood. A full 20 feet and several weeks further away in the relationship. After the cold shoulder and setback in the relationship, what happened the next day took me totally by surprise. The cat came over and sat down close to me to watch a bird in a palmetto tree. I held out my hand and suddenly this gorgeous wild animal moved over to me and initiated physical contact. It had been five weeks in the making and it was a special moment. Making all that progress and just one false move sent it away again. It moved back out into its mm -hmm. comfort zone. Mm For some reason we made eye contact again and a connection and the precious creature came back. Yeah, you're a pretty cat, aren't you? Hmm? You're not going to scratch me, are you? Yeah, poor little kid. <laughs> Got some big teeth there, little fella. <laughs> yeah. 
The only problem with you is you like to eat there, see? See that? You're playing and then you want to eat. You're wild, man. One hundred percent wild. You need a home, man. Huh? You need a home. Somebody to feed you. It was clear this cat would always be a natural killer outdoors and would likely come to harm. Two days later the cat was trapped and taken to the county animal shelter where it was adopted by a family a week later. I like to think they lived happily ever after. I'll always remember it.